Hello, beautiful ones. <laughs> Welcome to a new episode of In the Flow of Magic. It is your host, Viv, here, Yogini Viv. And I am so pleased that you are here. Let's set a mood. I am here sitting. My cat is, I was just wrestling with it. He's trying to settle in on my lap. So Percival is here with us and he's settling in right now. Yep, he's cozy. And I've got a cup of chamomile ginger tea here. So go ahead and get comfy yourself. I would love that. So in this episode, I would like to share for all my listeners two things. The beauty of mindfulness Okay, the beauty and the depth of mindfulness and something that came up as a result of my mindful awareness in terms of something that I have named a to do with abundance. All right. Uh, right now I'm calling it the helpless child syndrome. <laughs> and so let me just jump right in. Let me jump right in. And. In a few minutes, I do want to share with you a bit about my program, which is now open for enrollment for all women. But let me jump right in on this. Mindfulness is so, so powerful. So mindfulness meditation, one of the gifts of mindfulness is that it allows us to see things that we couldn't see before in our experience, in our life, because we become so quiet internally that what is bubbling up, come, it comes to the surface, okay? So picture that with me. Instead of being under the surface and like a murky, like murky water where we can't see through, mindfulness creates a state of clarity, say, in a beach in the Caribbean or in Sardinia where you can just see right to the bottom of the water, okay? That is... One of the benefits of mindfulness is that clarity. Okay, so let me talk about what happened just a few days ago. Um, working in a process, working with um, increasing prosperity, which I think especially for women can be difficult. Okay, it can be difficult for men too, but especially for women, we're not really taught to focus on money and certainly not too much. And, you know, I'll speak for myself. There are many money tropes that I think we can fall victim to. Let me know if you want me to talk more about this, okay, within the spiritual context. So what happened is I have a process where I do affirmations, where I write them. And what I do, and I should name this, but I write affirmations and then as I'm writing them, they'll start to change because I'll see the block in it. So I'm going to have to give you examples. So are you ready? So I wrote, it's okay for me to have money. I am safe. That was how it came to me, right? Which obviously the fact that I'm linking safety, there's something there, right? So our affirmation can help us see what the block is. So I wrote that several times and then... And again, this is where mindfulness comes in. It changed to, it's okay to have money now. I am safe. And I'm just going to give you the others and I'll double back and explain the, them and how this can benefit you. So I kept writing that over and over, okay? Because writing, you're directly connecting in the physical act of writing directly to your brain, right? It's more, it's been shown to be, and to me it's clear, intuitively that when you handwrite, it has a deeper connection to your brain. Then I'm writing, I'm writing, and then it suddenly changes to, it's okay for me to have my own money now. I am safe. It's like, oh, that's interesting. My own money. And then the third breakthrough I had is, um, it's okay for me to have my own money, not just borrowed, loaned to me. So three things basically came up. I realized that I had issue with having money now. And again, tie this into mindfulness because it's only because I had been meditating that I had the clarity of mind and the openness to see, oh, and then I flash back to my childhood when I could never have money now because I had to go to my father 
and he would always make us wait to have the money. Okay, so there was always a gap between the desire and getting the money. So I, that came up because my subconscious just changed it to, it's okay for me to have money now. And I was able to catch that. Oh, well, right, of course I mean now. And then I remembered, well, when you were a child, it was, it was never now. It was always a wait, a helpless waiting. All right, let's look at the second thing that came up. It's okay for me to have my own money now. Again, flashback to childhood through my mindfulness practices, I realized that the money wasn't my own, obviously, as a child. It wasn't my own money, but it was still imprinted on me. The money would be other people's money, parents' money, elders' money, some adults' money. It wasn't my money, okay? Okay, keep following. And then the final one was, so it was the now, right? And my own money. And yes, the other one was, it's okay for me to have money. Because I realized I believed and understood other people could have money, but I had doubts that I could have money. So let me put this all together for you now. So I'm calling this the helpless child syndrome. Now, I apologize if somebody had named this already. I will switch the name to the helpless child money syndrome because that's, it just became really clear to me. And again, leave your comments. Let me know if you have this. Let me know if this helps you because what I realized very clearly, not intellectually, was that little child, that imprint of you can't have, you know, waiting for some other person, in this case, my father, to give me money that was not mine. So it imprinted money is not yours to sort of have agency with. It comes from outside, more powerful people. You have to wait for it and that it's not your own money. So kind of these three things just really washed over me. And so to complete the loop, what I did is I then rewrote them to sort of address the sort of toxic belief. So here are the rewrites. It's okay for me to have money now (laughs) in the present moment without having to wait. So this, again, this is still an interim process. That was the the process. That was the improvement. Then it's okay for me, and I underline the me, to have money, right? Not just other people, but for me. And then I put my name, okay? It's okay for me to have money. And then it's okay for me to have my own money, not just borrowed or loaned, because as a child, always getting it from an elder who was more powerful, and my father continuously told me, and this is the crux of the matter, again, share with me if this happened to you from your mom or your dad, my father constantly said to me, I don't know how you're going to survive when we're gone, because you don't understand money. Those were his two phrases, you're not going to survive, and you don't understand money. Guys, what you have to realize is, we're talking, I might have been age 12, 13, 14. So instead of teaching me, he passed on his toxic beliefs to me rather than seeing himself as, oh, I am the masculine. I am the father. Let me show my child how to work with money. Let me show my child saving. I think he might have occasionally said, you have to save money, but that was it. (laughs) There was never an example. There was never explanation. So Let me just pause for a moment here. Let that sink in. Do you feel that you might have this? I'm really thinking of making like a little ebook about it. And this is totally in process. But as I said, the name Spirit gave me is, this is called the helpless child syndrome. And I don't, I know I'm not the only one who has it. It's it's, you could just label it, oh, it's the money blocks you got from your parents. But when I say helpless child, f- try to flash back to your childhood for a moment. I'm going to leave a little pause here. See yourself as a small child. So I would say go back to maybe five or six, fairly small child. 
and just see if you can tap back in or any age. Maybe it's a little older for you. What were your parents saying? What were they telling you? And what were they mirroring? What were they showing you? They might have said one thing, but shown you a different thing. So let me know what you think about this. Because again, what I'm emphasizing is it's only through my mindfulness practice that I really had this breakthrough and some other, a little bit, some other spiritual work. And so at this point, I want to just take a pause here and invite you personally, if you're listening to this, you're being called to study with me in my soulful mindfulness program. Now it is open. Let me pull it up so I can give you just some really quick details. I am a meditation teacher. I'm a certified yoga teacher since 2004, I believe is the date. It's been a long time, long, long time as I'm recording this. I believe that would be 25 years. Uh, You can do the math. And began practicing meditation with Zen monks when I was in college, which was in, um, I want to say, the, the 90s, coming out of college. So it also a very long time. And so mindfulness, my soulful mindfulness program combines mindfulness meditation. Again, if you've meditated, that's fine. I think it's perfect for beginners, also intermediates. Also, if you have meditated in the past and you've sort of lost the habit, you will absolutely learn something from this. It's an eight, it's eight sessions. It's on Saturday. I'm going to give you the page to go to. It's at my website in the flow of magic.com and you will see it on the home page. Okay, and I'll put the link in any show notes. So you should be able to see them. You may have to copy them. They may not be a direct link um, in some places. So these are live with me. It is not a course where you're left on your own, alone, staring at your computer. I teach it live in a small format and via Zoom. So we come together live. It is for women only at this point. There are eight sessions and I'm also adding in for many of us, for many of us, we need more rest and like rest is trending. Rest is trendy right now. Rest is the antidote to hustle culture. Women are pushing back on that. So there is an element of rest included in this. So I don't want you to think what I think for some women is they're a bit afraid. Here's what I think might be a fear. Oh my God, I have to learn something else. I am overwhelmed. As I'm recording this, it's 2024. We've got really contentious political presidential campaign. We are living in a post-reality world. We're living with AI already, the ability to change images, the idea of deep fakes, and it has not reached its apex yet. I'm just letting you know as an intuitive, it is not. We're living in where reality is increasingly fragile and where reality is fragmenting, okay? And where truth, what is true, what is reality is literally falling apart. This is only going to lead to more stress, I can promise you. And that's why what I'm teaching is important. So mindfulness meditation is the most highly studied, documented. It is a religious. So you do not, you know, it does not conflict with your religion. It absolutely does not. So check it out. And it does start October 5th. I am recording this. It's September, late September of 2024. This next session starts October 5th. I'd love to see some of you in it. It is open to all women. I especially encourage black and brown women because we're underrepresented in really taking in these practices, but it is open to all women if you are open to being in a diverse space and it is not going to be a lot of talking. It is not political discussion. It is not It's not consciousness raising in that way. I literally am going right into the practices because the practices are going to take you within to your higher self, your own inner knowing, your inner wisdom, your inner wise woman. And so while we may share what we're going through, it is not uh, going to be in any way confrontational. It's going to be a loving, warm group. So I really invite you to check it out. I absolutely know from the first session, you will feel better, much less stressed, more relaxed. 
you're going to feel like a sense of release and relief. I promise you. Okay. I've taught this particular program. I think this is the sixth time hard for me to track because I'm dyslexic. I'm somewhere at about the fifth or sixth and it keeps evolving. So one key thing also, I am including more, which I did not do initially. Sorry for the sofa squeaking here. Um, I'm including also acupressure points, healing self-massage points, specifically for sleep, calm, and stress. So not only are you just like, okay, I'm learning how to meditate. I'm going to give you specific points that you can do on yourself to flip that fight or flight switch off. Okay. This is absolutely worth it. The pricing as of now is the eight sessions are $179. If you register with a friend, if two women join together, like two separate households, um, it's $298. Okay, so you save, is that $30 or $50 each? I am horribly bad with math, but it's $298 if you're two friends joining together, two separate households, all right? Um, I'll tell you right now, the dates are, we start October 5th, the 12th, the 19th, the 26th, November 2nd, 9th, 16th, and 23rd. I'm, I know I, I'm not a big holiday. I know I should know what the dates are, but I'm sure I went around the holidays. Um, and if I didn't in any of the dates, I just called out, um, we will. And it's Saturday, Eastern time, 11 in the morning to 12.15 Okay, basically 11 to 12, but for questions, I like to leave a little room on the back end so we're not rushed. All right, again, all women are welcome. And go to my website right now, in the flow of magic.com. It should be on the home page. And let me go back so I can actually tell you once you get to the home page, um, you'll see programs because it is a group program. It's a group program. Go to meditation training and enroll. All right. This is your invitation. If you're hearing this, um, one woman who clearly was still in the struggle said to me, Oh, I'm not as stressed now. This was someone who was still wrestling with real economic, um, you know, economic issues. And of course I understand that, especially with what I just shared with you, <clears throat> but at no point did they ask me for a scholarship or a payment plan. So we all know, we all know, um, women who might have money challenges, but we, they find money for what they want, typically. Obviously, not if you're homeless or you're in a part of the world where resources are extremely scarce. I'm talking about Western women here. Even many poor Western women, you know, here in the U.S., we prioritize. We may get our nails done. We may get our hair done. Um, and yet we have income challenges. And so if you do need, um, if you have an income challenge and you are willing to invest something, reach out to me at assistant at intheflowofmagic.com. Um, this program is basically taken me decades to be able to teach and huge investments myself in my training um, and time and money spent in getting the training and getting the practice. So on that note, let me know. Please, please, please comment rate the podcast and tell me what you think of this process. And again, this, this concept of the, the child, the helpless child, if you would be interested in, should I make an ebook about it and sort of work through the process? Let me know your feedback. Can you relate to that idea? Um, I don't think it's the only money block people can have the only under earning block, but I, I really think especially if you're listening to me, there's a reason you're here. This might be part of your money problem. And you may be very well to do, you know, maybe you have a great salary, but you know, it feels capped, right? You know, we can be capped at different levels. If you feel there's a limitation, even though you have a great corporate job, but you know that there's a ceiling you're hitting and you know, it's something like you're under earning, just explore that. Get, okay, and let me know if you really want me to break the, down the process more in like an ebook or a mini program. So I am working through this. I have not all figured it all out, but I'm working with these new affirmations that specifically target the blocks that I discovered 
from my mindfulness meditation practice and getting more aware and getting more tuned in. Let's just take a brief moment together. Go ahead and close your eyes. <sighs> Sit up tall for a moment. And just breathe. Just see if anything that I have shared resonates with you. Breathe in. Breathe out through your mouth. Blow it out. And if you think there's a friend, colleague, or family member that might resonate with any of this, or you know that they're under stress, whether at work or with relationship, divorce, child with a health issue, and that meditation could be helpful to them. And again, my program is online, so you can live anywhere. Okay? You can live anywhere in the world, the U.S., Canada, um, various time zones. Now, some time zones might not work. I think Asia particularly might be on the opposite time zone. Um, but and do check it out, in the flow of magic.com. And then once you're on that homepage, as I started to say, yep, go to programs and then go to meditation training, click there. And you'll see the page. As I said, it is for women. And I look forward to working with you soon. We start this round. We start October 5th. Be well. Stay blessed. Do give feedback on the podcast. You can comment over on my blog or comment wherever you're listening to this podcast. I really would appreciate it. I'd appreciate a rating. Thank you so much. Stay blissed and blessed. Also, if you're interested in more one-on-one services, I teach the same program. I call it the Mindful Meridian. Bleh, sorry, the Mindful Meridian Method. Right? I meant that to flow off the tongue. Mindful Meridian Method. Mindful, and then the Meridian aspect of the self massage. You can go there. That's one on one coaching. Also very reasonable, like the price of therapy. I would say uh, that's the Mindful meridian method mindful meridian method.com there's a short video there and then for that one-on-one you can book an appointment to talk to me and find out more about that one-on-one coaching and that way the points are specific to you if you have high blood pressure you've got ibs whatever health issues you have acupressure which is a form of massage that i've done with clients for years i'll teach you points to do for yourself for supporting your healing as well as teaching you the meditation and um, if you're interested in energy healing which i've begun offering again also on my website on in the flow of magic please do come for an energy healing it is a distance energy healing and what it does and let me know if you want to know more but it catalyzes an area that you're blocked that we talk about it includes divination as well as the energy alchemy, okay? And that is under one-on-one on my website, Chakra Energy Healing, because I do work with the chakras. All right, much love. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.